So joining us today is an artist who has made quite the splash in the HEMA community recently from ads we're seeing on Facebook to a lot of shared posts on Instagram, along with his HEMA inspired cartoon characters. This artist has also worked on a number of other graphic design projects, including ar ar architectural visualization. I'm happy to introduce the artist behind Hapswert, Stefan. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Donnie. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you started your career in graphic design uh, and kind of talk about like your inspiration and what brought you into that industry. Mm, sure. OK, um, I, I studied in I think it was in 2000 from 2006 to 2009 in, in Berlin, Germany, uh, a subject that is called communication design. I'm not really sure how how broad that is known, but I think it's um, yeah, it's an it's a basic term. Um, and yeah, I, I did kind of, it's, it's kind of a, um, a, a study where you, where you studied a very broad range of things like just not like drawing, but, but also cross media from, um, 3d animation, classic animation, advertising, uh, all these things. And from, from there, after three years, I, I graduated and started working at a studio or, or an agency that was primarily focused on infographics. And that's how I started. Very cool. Uh, is, was there a favorite project you worked on? Uh, and then we'll kind of get I mean, into it, what you're working on now. Uh, it wasn't really set that. It's not really something that has anything to do with what, what I do now in terms of HEMA and drawing. It was more like infographics in, in terms of anything that um, that a company or someone wanted to explain in a more visual way. And we most of the time we use 2D and 3D there to, to explain everything from uh, biology, nature, how companies work, a lot of processes that were very technical and needed some some explanational animation, videos, print stuff, everything. Cool. Do you prefer 2D versus 3D? Ah, it's a kind of tricky question because uh, most of the things that I learned in, in, in the study was primarily 3D because I really liked it back then. But at the moment, I'm more focused on 2D because it's, it's kind of a more direct version, let's say, um, on when, when you have an idea and you want to put it very fast and quick down on paper, it's primarily or it's it's a better way to use a pen and do it fast and with 3d it's more like very very delayed work let's say so you have an idea and you then have to open the software and go in and use some models and position the camera and <laughs> so um i i still do it of, of course but uh, my my primarily uh, my my um how do you say it um uh, my Your preference. main yeah, is is more like illustration and two D. Very cool. Yeah, I we kind of run into that in other ways of like you know three D modeling has the software everything built into it versus just sketching where it's quicker it can be more tangible and you can produce yeah. almost a little quicker too just because you're not so dependent on software design on that aspect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But um, on the on the other side, uh, in in uh, I mean, a lot of times I use 3D programs still to kind of um, go into uh, very um, complex perspectives. So that's that's kind of an industry standard, especially when when it's uh, for movies and such things that that you just start out in a 3D program, you know, you, you kind of map out all the perspective and where uh, everything is, is placed. And after the that you kind of go back into onto the drawing board and uh, go in with all the details and put in the shadows, the lighting, the colors, and, and so on. Sure. So uh, on that aspect, does it usually start with you know storyboarding, starting in a two dimensional, and then moving to three D, or does yeah, it yeah, start? Yeah. Okay. So the idea aspect that's that's something that you kind of also see on on the stuff that I post now kind of regularly is that all these sketches that that's always the first step because you need to make sure that uh, anyone is is on the same page and the idea is, is is clear and afterwards 
you can you know do do, do the more expensive work let's say sure sure so how'd you get into hema uh hema i i started in 2016 uh, i i was in halle germany and worked there at an animation studio and i uh, had nothing really to do uh, for a long time with with you know sports i mean I, I i played soccer for 15 years and basketball and all other stuff but there i found myself not really doing anything and then i just googled and <laughs> there came a club um in in the search that uh, was was called indes and i just uh sh showed up for for a training and they it was really nice a lot of cool people there and then i i joined and yeah yeah it until now yeah so was it did you get kind of drawn by it from the sword fighting aspect or were you more just interested in a new sport uh to try out um uh, that's pretty hard I, i'm not really <laughs> remember exactly what it was i think i i was on a on a mod team uh, that that was uh trying to make a new um medieval sword fighting game and i i got a briefing there to uh sh make a bit of a, a research how how the uh, these these old manuscripts work and uh, how we could use it in in this game and from that on i did a little research and i found out about the club yeah i think that was that was the story behind that oh very cool are you allowed to talk about the game you were working on uh no it, that was that was just kind of an intern thing um to to try out some some new ideas but i really did not continue that okay very cool um do you do you find that so you mentioned you uh, did soccer and basketball did you find that that helped you moving into hema um just athleticism footwork anything like that oh yeah sure i mean uh i i started soccer when i was i think five or six years old and played until i was six, 18 or 19 and at the age of 14, I did uh, soccer, basketball, and tennis at the same time. So um, from that background, yeah, that, that was that, that helped me quite a lot. Sure. And not to, you know, stir up any pots, but who's your favorite soccer team? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really have one. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, cool. So do you have a uh, favorite weapon you like to study? <sighs> Uh, I, I started out with the longsword, but uh, at the moment, I don't really have any favorite. I, I really like, uh, you know, digging in, into all, all of them, and which I think is also kind of a prerequisite if you want to draw anything in, in a kind of authentic manner, um, that, that you kind of try everything and anything out. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so kind of along those lines, uh, how do you feel uh, your HEMA practice has helped you with your art? Um, that's, that's actually a kind of interesting question, because um, when you when you draw you, it's, it's, at first, it's a very theoretical thing in terms of that you have to memorize a lot of shapes and, you know, learn about something like anatomy and perspective and but on the other side, it's kind of the same when you when you use a sword. It's this this high, uh, eye eye hand coordination thing, you know. Yeah. And when you when you draw a line that you know exactly, you know, I I draw two two dots on a paper, and I want to exactly go with just one fluid fast motion from there to there. That's kind of exactly the same thing. So um, that's that's really something that surprised me that you can really um, use some of these things, some of these concepts, and even training methods to to uh, train this. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and has Hema kind of helped you with you know hand strength, anything like that? Have you found like oh, your oh, sketch yes, yeah, works yeah, better? Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not really sure uh, if it really helped me in in the terms of that that my uh, wrist strength is now a bit better than it was, you know, 10, 10 years ago. <laughs> but uh, I I know, for example, one one um, instructor used one um, particular method to to kind of find out how how the strike um in 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 which angle the strike goes 
um, it's like you you take a paper with with the Maya diagram on it, and you you pin it to the wall, and then you take a long sword or whatever, and um, you 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 fix a pen on the tip of the sword, and go through the hue motions very slowly, but try to kind of make a very clear and distinct um, uh, stroke or, or line on that paper. Sure. And and that surprised me because uh, I, I thought, is it really something that you can train like that? But it really shows when when your line isn't very, um, very, very clear or or it wiggles that your alignment wasn't really quite as it should be. Right. Well, and that's that's something a lot of people, I think, struggle with early on with HEMA is really with any swordsmanship, all of your actions have to be very deliberate and especially with these swords, if, you know, we always talk about hitting flat of like it, it's not as yeah. easy to hit with that edge as a lot of people might think. Yeah. Yeah, sure. sure. That's, uh, that's right. So from the artistic side of HEMA, I mean, there's a lot of different art styles that are, go into these manuscripts. And I think a lot of people almost miss that in some ways, HEMA is also part of art, of art history and all these manuscripts. Um, do you have a, favorite manuscript just from an art level uh, you like to look at? Uh, I mean, of course, uh, 133 is uh, really, really nice. But I would say from the mo where, where I take a lot of inspiration or take take a lot of um, the the figure construction is the Dürer one, the Dürer Fechtbuch. OK, yeah. But that's, of course, a very um, early version. So, and it's kind of, there is anything in it from uh, Le Kushner to, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, just those, more, <laughs> those just combination hodgepodge manuscripts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we, uh, at least in our club, we used to study uh, particularly 133 in Meyer. And we always like to point out just the dramatic change in art style you wind up yeah. seeing with that 250 plus years of evolution. Yeah, yeah. I, I I had um a couple of posts um in in the last days uh to to address this topic how how they went from very super um abstract figure constructions to more 3D shaped um ones. Oh interesting. Is that on your uh on the uh, Indes blog post? And uh, no, it's it's I think uh it's no it's only on Facebook. I think it's the from two or three days ago. Okay, very cool. Awesome. Uh, so anything else you'd like to talk about on the aspect of HEMA, your your art, how and how they kind of relate? Do you, do you find still that you're using HEMA to learn more about art or do you find HEMA kind of taken on its own role of you're just learning swordsmanship and on, then you are also doing art? Or is it just all so blended that it's hard to really say. I think right now it's really blended. I mean, I I I didn't really do much art before Hima. It was kind of an an uh, starting point to go back into drawing, um, just because I found out about all all these fechtbooks and I really liked the the way this uh, they they were drawn, mm -hmm. the the whole st style of it, and I just wanted to kind of replicate that and uh, put, put put some some you know comic and cartoon styles in it that i know from from my youth i mean i i looked you know like asterix and obelix uh, and um abrafaxe and all all these tv series movies and comics that that you probably also know yeah sure i mean it's always one of those interesting things on there are so many different ways people wind up coming into HEMA. Like for me, I mean, it was it was playing the Zelda games and watching Lord of the Rings and wanting to learn right, a sword yeah. fight from that. Uh, <laughs> some people come into it cool. to kind of make their Dungeons and Dragons sessions a little more realistic. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's very cool that kind of your, how you wound up joining HEMA uh, just from trying to do research about a project and then kind of falling in love with the art style of it. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's, that's yeah. I, I, I think that was exactly how it went for me, and I know from my 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 club that there are a lot of other people that are 
kind of from from reenactment and from archaeology and that's that was always the starting point for for them and then they found out uh, the same way that i found out about the club and yeah that's that that was kind of how they got going yeah absolutely um so uh the how uh Stefan and I kind of met was I just I fell in love with his art style. Uh, I saw a lot of it on Instagram getting shared around and I reached out to him because I wanted to get a logo and image uh, for some of my the blog work to try to start tying together all my work. So I kind of reached out to him and I said, are you willing to make a logo for Funky Buckler? Um, and that was kind of how it started. We uh, we had some back and forth. Um, you want to talk a little bit about how we kind of came to this logo and the design process, just how you started, how you approached it, and moving forward from there? Mm. Um, wait a second. I, I go on. Do, 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 do. Where is it again? I just need to open it up so I can remember a bit more of my, my train of thought. Um, Geez, there are too many projects in my project folder. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good Sorry. problem to have. <laughs> yeah, that's that's at the moment it's it's really really cool. Uh, that, that, if I did, there it is. All right. Um, yeah, that's it was kind of a pretty standard and normal way of of uh, progression in 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 these um, design projects. We started out with you. You gave me a little briefing on. Uh, what what the name was and what what the stance what the guard position was that that you wanted to have and after that I did the first scribble the first sketch um, to kind of nail down how how the composition works you know with the lettering on the bottom and the fencer on the top in in the I'm not really sure how how this guard is called uh, the the first custodia for the first, okay, all right. All right. Yeah. Um, and after that, uh, I just reiterated and uh, put a bit more detail into it. I mean, you usually I, I send this then to the client and he gives me a go, which you did. And after that, I just uh, did put a bit more detail into it. Uh, the typeface, I, I looked out for something that would fit that very well and just put it also in in there then uh the layout was a bit more like i i had the idea that you know the the fencer on the top in the first sketch was a bit lonely so i i tried to kind of frame him a little bit so that gets a bit more like you know it's um it feels a bit more like there is holding something together and what could you know fit better for a buckler logo than a circle right <laughs> that that was kind of the obvious <laughs> solution for 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 that and then um after after you have all these um compositional problems fixed and um then it's more like detail and a decoration and uh finding the final shapes and obviously then to uh kind of get a good likeness on on your face and so on. Yeah, well, that's another good, interesting point, because when I first approached it, I just told you, you know, create a character that you think of when you hear a funky buckler um, and yeah. you put together an image um, and we'll, we'll show it on the screen as well. And then I kind of had a change, kind of a change of heart in the middle where I didn't intend to want it to be a caricature of me until yeah. towards the middle of the process um that's that's actually that's very typical in in these projects because i think it has to something to do with the deadline i i i get this almost in every project that i that do just because i think the people have have this 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 urgent feeling that oh uh he he's working on it now so if i don't get anything that i want in in there and tell him right now it's not going to be in there right <laughs> and and that's that's actually how how um i would say you know like 80 90 percent of the projects that i do really um kind of get get feedback on sure well and especially uh for for me um originally my thought was 
Funky Buckler was going to kind of take on its own identity um, separate from me. And that's why mm. when I approached it, I said, you know, what, what comes to mind when you say it? But as the process went out and actually how some things wound up changing for uh, our, our uh, fencing club, uh, BBHF, I wound up moving Funky Buckler more into kind of my brand and my uh, identity. And that's, that's where we kind of switched it, where mm. I was like, you know, I want people to think of me when they think of Funky Buckler in a very kind of selfish way. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, that's, that's uh, totally no normal. And from, from that on, I think um, I finally, I did a, a black and white version just to, which is also kind of a normal uh, procedure. And after all the values uh, were set and in place, um, I, I did the, um, the colored version and after that i had in the end it was i think three no four four different versions just because i had them already um done in in the process yeah and so that's that's how you ended up with four different uh versions <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and that was great for me too because i can definitely see where different circumstances might call for uh, different coloring for the logos too um, yep. yeah, it, it was a fun project for me. It was just so cool to see how things, how you approached the art, how you approach it, at, like, kind of like you're talking about, it was a very systematic approach of this is where yeah. we're going to start. Yeah. There's going to be regular tag ups to make sure we're on the same page as we move forward. Um, and it was just, it was so cool to see from the beginning and how it ultimately evolved, uh, into funky buckler. Um, I think that's, that's something that, that from, for most people that, that don't work in this creative realm they they think of an artist more like someone that uh, is splashing you know paint on the canvas and uh, that's that's it but uh if you if you work with a client and and you need to make sure that um you're, you're always on the same page it's it needs to be very structured and methodical uh to to kind of control the the output yeah, yeah absolutely uh so um, kind of along those lines, uh, you have hapsworth.de. Um, that's kind of that seems to be your main website for uh, a lot of your artwork for yeah. heme related things. Uh, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about uh, that website and some of the services you offer there? Um, sure. Uh, first of all, I like how you pronounce it. <laughs> that's for, for Germans, that's always a funny thing because. Uh, you know, we, we, we call it not Halbschwert, <laughs> it's called Halbschwert, <laughs> but it's, I, I totally understand that's, that's really yeah, well, hard to pronounce. So. Oh, we laugh at how I pronounce English words too. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 th I think it was last week, someone wrote me um, how to pronounce another German word. And I, I, I think you he was also from texas <laughs> and and he he did send me uh, two or three uh sound files from youtube where someone else or a computer generated uh voice uh pronounced these these uh, this this word in two or three different type <laughs> versions <laughs> and, uh, all right nope that's not uh, that, that's that's the version yes you can go with this one <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we always get tripped up with like Dusak, Dusik, how to pronounce those. <laughs> and then you see some people arguing about you know Gorget, Gorget, Gorget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all of these, all of these Americans not exposed to these languages regularly, trying to pronounce Kima terms. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, you want to talk about the the website and some of the services you're offering there? Yeah, sure. Um, at the moment, it's it's kind of uh, still a side project. I mean, it's it's uh, getting more more and more. Uh, I I get more and more jobs right now at the moment. But um, for for the most time, uh, for for the last, I I'm not really sure when I started it. I think it was in two thousand seventeen, maybe eighteen. Um, it was still just a side project and i offer now to most of the i mean obviously the the portraits that you probably all have seen um by now but i get also a lot of um guys like like you that want to have some sort of logo or 
club brand thing. Um, some some websites even. Um, and some collaborations, you know, like uh, um, no, I can't really talk about them <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, because uh, you, uh, <laughs> you also worked on the web design for the uh, Indes Fencing Club, yes, joined, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, but it's it's kind of it's 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 um it's I think it's Jimdo uh, this this uh this CMS um. Uh, I don't know how to call it in English. It's, it's a Baukasten system, um, CMS box box system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Um, but you can easily, you know, uh, do do a lot of the layout work is is already set and in 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 place. And uh, most of the things that I did was just you know making a cool background and designing the logo in 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 a new way and then filling up the site. Uh, now, with that, is if you can talk about it, is that more of a uh, three-dimensional art you're doing, or is it still uh, more two-dimensional? Uh, you mean with website, or or what's the? Well, because uh, you mentioned adding, you know, backgrounds, adding uh, more of uh, adding shadowing. Is that more of the three-dimensional side, or? Oh, okay, um, no, this th this is kind of a mix in in between because for some things I uh, use three D as to um, model something and then put it in in uh, onto an onto an surface. But on the other hand, a lot of other things like the sword that you see in the background is just uh, my training sword that I. Uh, took a picture off and then via Photoshop then put an um, a cast shadow on it and yeah so okay. it's in in this case it's very mixed in more on the on the idea of what what I read what I need right now sure yeah. sure yeah. absolutely um, so you mentioned Facebook you're on Instagram you have your own website um, you've worked on a number of Hema websites as well. Uh, are there any other Hema related projects you'd like to talk about and just kind of get out there that you're open to doing that type of work? Oh, uh, no, at the moment, not no. Uh, probably there there is a bit of more stuff coming up. I mean, when when you look at my shop, there there are some some prints available that that I designed um, some some postcards and a, a poster and a little framed picture. Um, that's that's all I have for for now. But maybe I I mean I'm 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 probably not really should talk about it. <laughs> but <laughs> as as we are here, um, yeah. I'm I'm working on two little things that um, are more story uh, uh, related. So uh, one one thing is like a Facebook, but very on a very reduced level. I mean it's it's not something very complex. It's it's more like the idea of um, when you when you combine a coloring book for children, in combination with um, with with a fecht book, you know, oh, that, very interesting. That that I, it's it's probably I I I ask myself, okay, what what was what is the thing that that you uh, your your eight year old uh, self would would like to have, <laughs> and that's that's probably about it. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. And that also, I mean, the outreach and just kind of the educational side of that as well will go a long way. Um, cool. Well, and and be sure to check out the description at the bottom of this video. I'll be sure to link all of Stefan's uh, work and where his you can find his websites. Um, I think with that, I that really answers all my questions. I really appreciate you tagging up and coordinating this. I love the logo. You'll wind up seeing it everywhere as very proudly worked um, by Stephen Thank you very here. much. Um, and it has been a blast talking with you. Thank you. Me, me too. Thanks awesome. for having me. Yep. Take care.